Hello and welcome to Tiger Bites. I'm Jay, this is Tim, and you're watching Tiger Bites, where we get to address your feedback and comments from our shows on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and the Tiger Talk forum on the website. Now, Tim. Can I tell you, Tiger Talk is getting about 30 new people signing up each day. Woo, Tiger That's what Talk! We've Average all the way through October. That's right. So uh, you're growing into probably the biggest uh, foreign forum for yakking about Thailand um, in the country. So yeah. yeah, very proud of how it's going. Yeah, thank you to the viewers for supporting us. Uh, you can have a look at Tiger Talk Forum and talk about various topics on our forum. So check out Tiger Talk on the links the are website. under any story. Okay. Now, so starting off the comments, were there any comments about uh, your little um, faux pas yesterday? Right, so uh, yesterday, for those of you who are unaware, there was a little snafu, a little mishap, um, where a wrong button was pressed and unfortunately we went live while I was warming up. And during the warm up, you might have heard some fruitful language because I was making a lot of mistakes. Very, oh dear. What That's you, right. You just pressed the button. Oh, sorry, I pressed the button. We've got an electronic. Uh, table here. So my first comment here is from WF WFH who says, the first effort was a total crack up and high entertainment. It proves you guys are just everyday people having a red hot go. WFH, um, you're, you're right on the money there. Uh, uh, I am just an everyday person having a red hot go. So thank you for appreciating that. And, and let me just say, a lot of the people who did watch that little snafu of a live stream um, were quite supportive, did really enjoy it, and gave it a thumbs up. Uh, for those of you who were offended or thought that um, this was done on purpose, it wasn't. It was a mistake. It wasn't supposed to go live. Um, so apologies to anyone who was offended, and thank you to everyone who ended up supporting it. And in the meantime, I'm just going to wallow in your... Uh, Own self-loathing. Yes, yes. Wonderful. Marshall Leo who is a regular commenter, says doing a great job of diverting the attention away from the corruption and into the much praised New Year's party. So he's sort of thinking that the officials are using all this uh, talk about Lisa and Andrea Bocelli coming to a New Year's concert to divert attention from all the serious issues. They, to Thai government doing that? That doesn't sound like them. There's no way they try to deflect. Well, I mean, they've been talking a lot about, of course, this November reopening. Thailand hasn't really ever been closed. There's always been a way to get back to the country. Yes. But certainly November the 1st is the time where the it's not quite quarantine-free because at least even if you come as a fully vaccinated traveller, you'll have to spend at least one night quarantined or confined to your hotel until your negative PCR test comes back. Right. But, uh, yeah, November the 1st is a big change to the whole narrative. And so, yeah, I mean, the, there are other things happening in Thailand, but I don't think they're using the it, a little bit of good news to divert from all the bad news. Bit silly, Marshall. All right. Uh, I'm moving on to my next comment. Now, I think it was yesterday that me and you made a friendly gesture slash bet regarding whether Andrea Bocelli and Lisa Blackpink that are supposed to come for New Year's celebrations in Phuket will actually make it. Uh, some people took this very seriously, a lot of people, and uh, here's one comment from- well, Can I say, before you read the comment out, yes. it was a non-binding contract yes. that we shook hands on TV. Yes. So it's, it's not just a bet, it was a serious non-binding contract which will allow me to furnish 1,000 baht when you lose the bet. Yeah, that's right. Okay, <laughs> all right. John Concan says, I thought gambling is illegal in Thailand, but you do it openly on TV. John? We did. It's a what joke. What are you gonna do about it? It's a joke. All right, just calm down, just relax. <laughs> it's called a joke. He's not gonna hold a knife to me if he does win the bet and say, give me my money. That's Where's exact, my money? That's precisely what I'm gonna do. Yeah, so it's just a joke. All right, we're just having a laugh. It's just a friendly bet, it's not gambling. Not, no one's ever, ever gonna actually get any money. Not on air anyways. I'm sorry, the presentation <laughs> will be made on air. I know for nothing, everybody to see. No. Uh, Scuba D watched Thailand News Today yesterday and was horrified yes. to see that Jet wasn't uh, presenting the program. Oh no. 
So uh, the CEO of the Tiger had to step in yes. at short notice and read the news. Take over the mantle. Scuba D was horrified and he said, Tim sucks, bring back the other person. <laughs> Thank you very much, Scuba D. It's because you weren't wearing his wig. Anyways, <laughs> Mark United says... Oh, Mark United gives us an explanation on angel cakes. Now, one of the uh, best comments from yesterday's Tiger Bites was uh, from the Scousers who were saying that I love having angel cakes while watching your show. And we both asked, what are angel cakes? So Mark United uh, gave the best response saying, angel cakes equal angel slices, Mr. Kipling's famous brand of UK cakes. Um, what is an angel slice? Delectable layers of pink and yellow sponge cake with a heavenly vanilla filling topped with fondant icing. Sounds Very a little nice. bit uh, feminine, Scousers, yeah. just a little bit. Very nice, but a bit sweet. Mm, just a little bit. Yeah, to which uh, Is Candatibe says, aren't angel cakes like Twinkies? Yeah, basically, they're the English Twinkies. I'm I none the wiser. I, I, yeah, I'm, I've lived in Thailand for the last 20 years. I grew up here. I don't, never tasted a Twinkie nor an angel cake. So if anyone would like to send that to the tiger... I know it wouldn't make it. It wouldn't be. It would probably rot before it reached us. But you're so welcome to that. try. Yeah, but you're welcome to try. Yeah. Tony Perez speaking about uh, this concert that uh, apparently is going to be held on New Year's Eve with Andre Bocelli and Lisa from Blackpink. Yeah. And still a lot of people saying, "Who's Lisa from Blackpink? I'm not going to go to the concert." Tony's really packaged the whole thing in one sentence. May I read it to you? He says, "Going to be weird." 80-year-old Italian people and 18-year-old and 18-year-old Thai girls at this event, marriage made in heaven. <laughs> I think he's got it spot on. Tony Perez, mic drop. Yes. <laughs> Nothing else needs to be said. All right, here's a comment from Patrick Jussie who says, I only wear a mask when entering a shop. Otherwise, never. Um... A lot of people actually uh, do this. Uh, they do only wear a mask for, you know, show purposes. And uh, Patrick, you're not the only one. A lot of people, well, coming from Phuket, are very relaxed about the whole mask wearing. And you'll see that in Bangkok as well. While we're walking around, everybody wears a mask. But as soon as you enter a restaurant, you'll see 200 people sitting in chairs very close to each other wearing no mask. So what's the point? I mean, you know. Well, you do have to remove your mask to eat. Yes, but you can do this. Oh, of course you don't. Is it inefficient? Is it silly? Is it crazy? Yes. But, you it's know, if you're going to... the law. It is the law. Yes, unfortunately. So uh, just do what you're told, otherwise you'll be spanked and sent home. Yeah, people wear... People take mask wearing here quite seriously in Bangkok, I've noticed. Yes. And, and perhaps less so in outer regions. But, yeah. um, yeah, mask wearing, I think, as we've said before, is probably going to be a thing for quite a long time to come. Road Pigeon wrote to us, and Road Pigeon said... What a name. And <laughs> guess what he's talking about? Yeah, what is he talking about? The concert with Andrea Bocelli yes, and Lisa. Yes, He said, floating stage for the concert will solve the problem while spectators stand and cheer on the bridge, in brackets, hopefully can hold the weight without collapsing. Oh. Smiley face. Uh, yeah. I don't know the engineering specifications for the Saracen Bridge, which we've recently been informed is not going to be where the concert's being held. Yeah. They've told us it's not going to be held at Saracen Bridge without telling us exactly where it will be held. Well, the bridge collapsing, I can hardly imagine people jumping up and down listening to Andrea Bocelli's opera songs. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> imagine if that actually happened. The, the bridge is about 300 metres long. It joins the north of Phuket to the mainland. I mean, you could swim across if you have to. Yep. And they dredge that particular passage of water every single day mm -hmm. to make sure that Phuket doesn't join up with the mainland because, heaven forbid, Phuket has to remain an island. Yep. But uh, it carries tens of thousands of big trucks with lots of stuff on them carrying angel cakes and other things into Phuket uh, so I'm sure it could hold probably 10,000 people but it's not going to be held at Saracen Bridge so we've been told today. Right. Uh, talking about Lisa. Hey, Lisa has been, hey, hey. Yes. Does that mean that I've already won the bet? What? Because we said that Lisa and Andre Bocelli won't be performing at Saracen Bridge on New Year's Eve. No, you, I, said they I, would, you said they wouldn't come to Thailand for New Year's Eve, not about Saracen. Oh, uh, we're going to have to roll back the tape. Yeah. What do you think, Chai? Did I say that? I don't know. He's, yeah, he's not, 
He's not going to get involved. He just sits there and scrolls through his uh, phone during the program. He doesn't listen to a word we say. Right, here we go. Continually uh, talking about Lisa, as all of you love talking about Lisa. The Thailand experience says, why do you keep saying La Lisa is a world superstar, global phenomenon? Nobody outside of Korea maybe some Thais also, would have heard of her. And another person, Noob Master, says, world famous La Lisa, never heard of her, or Blackpink, was it? Famous in Asia, maybe? Um, Noob Master oh, and boy. the Thailand experience, I'd just like to take a moment to tell you to firstly take a moment and say to yourself, it's not about me, <laughs> right? Just because you don't know doesn't mean you need to hate, or just because you're unaware doesn't mean that it's not true. Now, just to give you a quick answer, Lalisa herself has 65 million followers on Instagram, so that might just give you a hint, perhaps a little idea of how famous she is. Um, and these 65 million followers are all over the world, therefore making her a global superstar and a phenomenon. And she might not be in the same age bracket or, you know, target audience that you generally watch, but that doesn't change the fact that she is a global superstar and people wouldn't be paying 100 million baht to bring her over here just for a concert. Uh, we could go further by saying that the uh, out of the top 10 musical acts in the world at the moment, two of them are South Korean acts. That's right. Uh, one being Blackpink, which Lisa is in, and the other one being uh, BTS, a sort yeah. of a male version of, um, of the same sort of genre. Yeah. And on YouTube, the two acts that have had the highest number of views in the first 24 hours of the release of a video, mm -hmm. you may be shocked to know that it's not Good Morning Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> but the two acts that have the highest number of views in the first 24 hours are both South Korean acts, <laughs> BTS and Blackpink. Yeah. So if, if you like... Queen and Bon Jovi yeah. and Rolling Stones, you may not be aware of some of these new musical acts, but uh, these are really, really huge. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I suggest you stay, like, stay tuned to the New Year's show or like, check them out on YouTube because you might not be able to understand their language, you might not like the high beats, but one can admire the talent that the it is. The high beats. The high beats of the music, you know, it might be too fast for them, who knows? Uh, it might not be your style, but you can at least respect and admire the talent that is clearly visible. So Scott Niver says, thanks for the report. One day at a time, masks and vaccines are the future. He's probably got that fairly right. Yes. Do you want another one? Uh, you go for one more. The Wild One says, for the secondhand medical gloves, this is the story about, uh, we called it the grotty glove fiasco yesterday. Uh, the Thai government has three suspects so far. Number one, illegal Burmese, oh. number two, Joe Ferrari, oh. and number three, all the anti-government people who use the three-finger salute. So thank you very much, the wild one. He solved the, uh, the grotty glove crime. All right, uh, my next comment here is from Greg, P Greg Pocock. Who is a tiger legend, by the way. Legend. Thank you for being a legend. Right, Greg Pocock says, hi guys, adding to Tim's comment regarding ketamine, as I've had many treatments of ketamine for chronic pain, I've become aware that it is a very regularly used anesthetic, anesthetic drug. Um, so this is uh, regarding the topic that we were talking about. The cave di divers in Tam Luang Cave used uh, the doctor's advice to use this drug to uh, sedate and make the rescue of the children and teachers that were stuck in the cave uh, possible. possible. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for that comment, Greg. And that's my last comment for today. Well, speaking of ketamine, yes. um, I actually have used ketamine. Of course you have. And not in a party situation, uh -oh. in a hospital, I uh, where I actually had the, this particular scar here. I had a, a lump cut out of my arm, oh. and they had me on ketamine for two or three days, and I was just hallucinating all the time. <laughs> but I did have the presence of mind to say, I don't know what you've got me on, but turn it off. It was actually very unpleasant. Oh, really? So I'm not sure why people would take it recreationally because it uh, was not pleasant at all. All right. Uh, any other comments? Or I've got one from Jay Burgamp. Jay Burgamp. Uh, I'm amazed by Tim's capacity to travel to Phuket and being back to the Tiger Studios so fast, he is not just a pair of pretty eyes. Ooh, fan club. 
So all I can say about that is uh, it all comes down to aeroplanes and airports. Yes. And uh, yes, it's not that difficult to book a ticket and get on a plane. And it's around about one hour in the air and around about, say, uh, an hour, 20 minutes gate to gate. So it's not that difficult. He's a man on the go. Anyways, um, that's all the comments we have for today. That's all I've got. Right. Thanks, Tim. Thank you, Shai. And thank you to the viewers for watching the show. We hope you've liked it. And we hope you try out coffee culture. So you can find your ground coffee and coffee beans from all across Thailand and these beautiful mugs at coffeeculture.asia. Type in the code tiger or click the link in the description below to get a 10% discount. You can also taste out their tasting kit to find out which flavor you really like and buy the bigger packets. Just very quickly, we've got the Thursday COVID update, uh, 9,658 new infections. That's gone up. Has gone up a little bit. Uh, we have been under 10,000 for at least a week or so. Uh, sadly, 84 new COVID related deaths to report. All right, um, that's all the comments for today. Um, also, please leave a comment on Instagram, Facebook, our shows on YouTube, and the Tiger Talk Forum on the website. Um, and give some love out to our Thai YouTube channel. Uh, we've started a new Thai YouTube channel on the other side, so check them out if you have a little time to spare, and we will join you tomorrow.